Uh, as you know, the history with robotic surgery has started uh, uh, many years ago. Uh, the uh, and the over the uh, it, these many years that there's been there have been some uh, a major upgrade of the current Da Vinci system. Uh, we pass from uh, different generations of the robot. Uh, each of the each of uh, each of one um, better with some technical enhancement compared to the uh, to the previous one. Uh, the last one is the one uh, that. Uh, uh, came out on, in, uh, three, about three years ago, the XI, which allowed a multi quadrant surgery as a thinner instrument, thinner scope, longer instrument, and thinner instrument, and a thinner scope, and allows also to, um, uh, to have some integrated uh, uh, fire flight technology. Um, uh, as uh, we've been using robotic surgery, also the literature uh, uh, on robotic surgery in urology has certainly increased, and uh, certainly the robot has uh, impacted majorly. Um, the, our field, um, uh, if you think about these, uh, protect, prostatectomies were done um, 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 mostly open uh, uh, when the robot came out. Now about 80 percent, or that's one of the estimates of, of prostatectomy done in the U.S. are done robotically, as you probably already know. There are current indications for urologic uh, application of robotic, of robotic surgery. Some of them are quite established. Some other are more uh, debatable, questionable, if you like it. Uh, certainly, one big issue with robotic surgery is that we have only one company. So it's a monopoly uh, that um, is in charge to control the market. Um, and they, the robotic system installed in the world from the intuitive uh, has been exponentially grown over the years. And, and with time, they also now, uh, it's, uh, they, you know, they put up uh, high barriers for, uh, to, um, against the entry of other surgical robots so just because they have a very good product, first of all, certainly. Uh, and then there are some uh, uh, patent uh, issues, uh, regulatory uh, clearances. Uh, they, they also already have training centers. They're very uh, uh, customer uh, relationship, very good relationship with customer, uh, very strong presence of, of in, on the field. And therefore, it's very difficult to compete with such a company. However, things might change or, uh, soon uh, because in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a very short time, some of the patents they have, they will expire. And this can, uh, can generate uh, uh, intriguing, stimulating research, and that is being uh, done in different uh, parts of the world. Uh, so things might change, in other words. And certainly, if the Da Vinci is a very good product, very good um, toy, uh, on the other side, there are some drawbacks. Uh, and these are listed here in this paper from, from Dr. Das Gupta. There is some uh, difficult communication between the console surgeon and your team. Um, you still require multiple ports. Uh, there is some, also some degree of clashing. Uh, of, uh, and uh, also, you don't have the, the wide uh, uh, variety, variety of instruments that you have with open on laparoscopic surgery. Uh, still, there is an issue, uh, issue of not having any uh, uh, tactile feedback. And uh, least but, uh, last but not least, the cost is still very sky high uh, to buy and to maintain a robot. Uh, what are the, uh, the other options that uh, are uh, basically on the market? Uh, one, and you might have uh, seen this before, is the Senans system. This was by, uh, bought by uh, Transcendrix, which, which is a North Carolina-based company. The technology, however, was de developed in Italy uh, by um, in northern Italy, and then was bought. You know, the company was bought from this American company, and they're trying now to commercialize the product. I'm not aware uh, of many. They probably have sold very um, and a handful number of, of systems because the cost is still high. Uh, but the main future of this system, as you can see from this video, uh, is that uh, basically, uh, if the video starts, is that uh, they have a. Um, uh, it, the, the surgeon is, is seated at a console. Uh, um, it, the, the, first of all, the big difference with the damage is that each arm is separated by the other, so they're all independent. Um, and there can be an advantage in terms of uh, port placement. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, where the, uh, as you can see, however, the instruments, they, more, uh, they are more um, similar to laparoscopic instruments and robotic uh, end of wrist. Uh, uh, instrument that we use nowadays. The surgeon is sitting here. Also, the handles are more similar to laparos uh, laparoscopy, so are not uh, ergonomically as comfortable with Da Vinci. And uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the surgeon position is certainly comfortable, but the 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 the, the way he moves that the uh, uh, the, the, the the image is by using a, a 3D glasses, and that there is a high tracking system. One of the dis distinctive features of this system is, is that there is some um, 
tactile feedback, so the, the surgeon can feel uh, when he touch a structure in the in, in the in the belly, uh, and that this is probably a major, uh, this is probably a significant improvement as is shown here in this uh, in this video. Um, and again, this is the the way it works. The, the uh, with surgeon when surgeon the surgeon moves the head, the the he can zoom on one part of the field. Um, the um, and this has been used. Uh, uh, clinical not in urology for uh, um, uh, OBGYN cases and also for colorectal surgery groups in Italy published on this and, and that's because the, the company who developed the technology was based in Italy so they you know they, they had collaboration with surgeons from 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 that area of the world um, and in terms of our specialty just uh, some uh, uh, preclinical study in pigs with partial nephrectomy has been done uh, this is also another thing that is not, um, so that one is on the market in the, already in the US. Uh, this one is not. It's going to be on the market soon, probably in Korea this year. Price to be uh, determined. I, uh, I, I asked Dr. Kunra from Beyonce, who is the major, you know, the PI on this, on the development of this, of the, on the clinical development of this uh, system. It's still a master slave system. You have a very, it looks like, uh, uh, like the, 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 the intuitive one. So you have a forearm, uh, a robotic patient cart, uh, the tower and the console, uh, and the, the instrument are reusable, uh, more reusable than the one from the Da Vinci, uh, from the Intuitive. Uh, they did some, uh, this pub initially published some preclinical study in the, in the pig model, and they also, they now are, uh, they done also, and again, it might not work, or it might work, uh, but anyway, this was a, a small video clip showing a, um, uh, the uh, rats sparing radical prostate so they, they some this is uh, so they did a clinical series on this uh, showing the clinical feasibility and safety of the device that probably will receive the Korean FDA uh, approval uh, this year and will hit the market there uh, if the, when it will hit the market here uh, that I'm, that I'm not sure um, as you can see is very uh, probably not quite as good as the intuitive one but very similar uh, the, and that's, that's a table summarizing basically uh, the three system. Again, the three systems that are on the market. As you can see, we, we talked about the, um, I would like to point out the size of the instruments that are different here. Um, the, um, here for the sentence, the, the, the fact of having different, uh, uh, um, different uh, arms that are separated and the, um, the reusable instrument that are completely reusable on the sentence, which can be cost effective in the long term. And also for the Revo, compared to the Da Vinci, you can use this man more than 20 times. So also that so is some. There might be some cost saving. Um, then there are some other systems that are um, still under uh, development. So one is the one developed by a company called Avatera in Germany. Uh, this has been they've been working on this for a few years now. Uh, are, these are a couple of pictures. As you see, they have a, a console with with an integrated seat. They have a uh, 3D HD uh, image. Now they have the four uh, robot uh, mounted on a single cart. The instruments, they have six de degree of freedom, and they are a five millimeter in diameter. Um, and uh, in Japan, there's another company, uh, Medicaroid, that is basically uh, a, a joint uh, a, a, a company uh, from, from Kawasaki and Sysmex. They also have a a, a, a factory in Silicon Valley. They are working on a robot which seems to be a robot with uh, three robotic arms that are mounted to the operative table, uh, microscope-like uh, technology, and also for these human trials are, are expected for uh, later this year. Um, then uh, the, the one that is also uh, ongoing in terms of work, work in progress, I will say, uh, is the one that, from the, that is being developed by Medtronic. Um, uh, in, this is actually technology that was initially uh, uh, started in Germany. Uh, what happened is that uh, Covidian bought the, the license for commercial use, then Medtronic bought Covidian, and basically are, they are working now on the 10th prototype. Uh, they plan to start clinical trials in India and eventually launch a device later this year uh, in the United States. We'll see. And, um, and last, again, another uh, effort, this is a joint effort by, by Google and Johnson & Johnson called, in a company called Verb Surgical, 
uh, there is uh, no way to find any information on this system. It's very top secret. So uh, the only thing that we know that they are working on that. So I, I'm not sure what else to uh, tell you about that. Uh, and uh, I want to then uh, uh, move on with my presentation by, by showing you some advances in the field of single port surgery. As you know, single site or single port surgery has been uh, very exciting uh, for many surgeons uh, worldwide uh, a few years ago. And then uh, the, the interest and for this, uh, this was a study that we did a few years ago. Fernando was also involved, uh, a big effort by, by all these centers. Uh, showing basically the technical feasibility, but also the technical challenges of uh, doing this uh, laparoscopically. Uh, the robot could be the answer to, to advance the field, but, uh, and actually Intuitive initially uh, proposed this uh, system, which is called, uh, uh, what's called Vespa or Da Vinci Single Side, that's the commercial name. Um, basically instruments are curved instruments that go through, they can triangulate through the, uh, through the by entering the abdomen and allowing to, um, basically have a triangulation because as you know the main problem with the single size surgery is that instruments are parallel and that can be challenging and we did uh, this animal study uh, when I was at the Cleveland clinic um, and showing uh, we, you know we tested these in the animals as you can see big limitation again is the fact that the instruments are basically laparoscopic instruments and not not they don't have any uh, um, articulation uh, the, some centers in, either, in Europe have done uh, clinical. Uh, this was really commercialized mostly for cholecystectomy for general surgery, uh, general surgeons. Then some uh, urologists adopted for pyeloplasty, and they've done some, uh, you know, they've done cases with good outcomes, uh, comparable to standard, uh, uh, to the standard um, multi-port surgery. Uh, this is a video from Professor Guazzoni from Milan, um, and. Uh, for sake of time, probably we can, uh, I can move on. And, but again, you see the same image that you were seeing in the, in the, in the pig model, basically. Um, so, in the, but this is in the patient. So, they, they, you know, in the end of good surgeons, it can be done with this platform. Uh, I'm going backwards. The a further advance in the, in the, from, the, from, from Intuitive has been the so-called Da Vinci SP system. Um, we work on this study, it was a clinical study that we published a few years ago. Um, uh, they, they were done, uh, a nephrectomy and, and a radical prostatectomy cases were done. The cases were done in France, actually. It was a, a joint effort by the uh, Cleveland Clinic Group and the University of Lille. Um, and uh, basically, uh, the idea was to have a a single port that you can introduce into the abdomen and then have um, a camera and instrument that go through the dead port and work. Um, these instruments are different from the one we use uh, with standard robotic surgery because they have an additional uh, site where the instrument can bend um, and therefore uh, you can have triangulation when you are inside. And to allow this you need a specific patient card that I will show in a second. That a, a newer version of this, which is already a second generation, and basically is a, uh, also they improved the, the quality of the instruments. And you can see uh, this is a patient card that is very, very similar to the current XI patient card. And uh, this, uh, this is, um, however, it allows to, uh, to put a, um, all the instruments, as you can see, I think it's worth seeing this video specifically, uh, uh, because you can basically put all the uh, instruments to the same a cannula that I will show in a second here. Uh, and this is, uh, so th as you can see, it's a single, uh, in this case, is a, a lab working and done in the cadaver. Uh, and basically, uh, the, you can put the port through the, uh, through the, um, this is the, the port, which is uh, about 25 millimeter. Uh, and to this port, you, you can, uh, the port has, has, is similar to, a, to the trover that we use for the XI. Um, it's different channels, however, that's the difference. And through these, you can put the, uh, there's an obturator, so you can put the port through the obturator. <coughs> and then you can uh, basically, uh, each of these is the, uh, the docking uh, side for, the, for each of the instruments, basically. Um, so the, is something uh, still uh, in uh, in progress, but it's basically very uh, s almost ready to hit the market, um, and uh, we'll see. It was supposed to come out on the market 
already a couple of years ago, it didn't. So there might be probably commercial reasons for that. But uh, as you can see, it's uh, you know this is the what you will probably see later this year. Um, and again, this is uh, and this is a one of the just a video clip to show how the technology allows you to basically perform a a, a surgery uh, with the same uh, uh, you know steps of a, a standard uh, partial nephrectomy. This is a partial nephrectomy case done here, dissecting the kidney, uh, the colon from the kidney, uh, so getting access to the kidney, uh, performing the resection of the tumor, performing the renography, and all done with the, again, with a single access point. Uh, of course, then the question is, do you believe in single access versus multiport uh, surgery? That's another question. But technology basically is almost ready to, and again, this is not the, the, techno the last uh, prototype, the last generation of this. Um, so, and moving on, uh, again, this is going to be, uh, is already FDA cleared and it's compatible. You need to have an XI uh, to, to use this. Uh, other companies are working on this. Uh, the Sport is a Canadian-based company, has been working on this forever. Um, we're supposed to hit the market, but it never did. Uh, same, um, uh, similar concept as you see here. Um, but, uh, and this is also a small, a, a small video clip of this. But again, this is more similar to the, to the Senans, to the one from Transenterix. So with the, the, the console surgeon, the, the surgeon sits here, he has um, 3D glasses, and the instruments are more similar to laparoscopic instruments. Uh, so probably not a step forward uh, in the good direction. This is another, something else we worked a few years ago, uh, it's called SPIDER, uh, was conceived for less single site surgery. And now we have a, an advanced version of it. It's called Surgibot from the same company. Um, but still, uh, um, you know, uh, not sure if this is going to be uh, if, uh, very successful um, because it's still a, not a perfect system. To give you some take home messages, I think several robots we hit, will probably hit the market in the next five, 10 years. Uh, the, um, the, the Da Vinci, the intuitive, I set uh, very, high, very high technical standards. And unfortunately, all these devices will need to be compared to what we have now, which you know, is, is a standard. Um, and we'll see how we'll go. And um, in the implementation of all these instruments will depend not only by their approval, but also by the clinical applicability, the costs. And uh, uh, ultimately, uh, we will we'll also need to understand if they can translate in better patient outcomes. Uh, and uh, I, if you want to read more about this, there is uh, this review, uh, which was mainly uh, done by Dr. Rassweiler from Germany, did a lot of effort, a huge, uh, really systematic review, including all the knowledgeable uh, uh, on this, uh, in this field. Thank you again for your attention. <laughs>